Happy Easter, Church! Happy Easter. Easter. The Lord is risen. Yes. He is risen indeed. Welcome to Hope United Methodist Church on this Easter Sunday as we come to celebrate new life, to celebrate an empty tomb, to celebrate no matter how dark the night, the dawn will come. We are grateful for your presence here today. We wish you a happy Easter. For those of you that are new to our church, we hope that you will stop by the Fellowship Hall and pick up a gift that uh, we may say thank you for your presence with us. For those of you that are online, thank you for worshiping with us wherever you are. Drop your name in the chat and say hello to everyone there. And for all of you, the attendance pads will be passed out a little later on in the service. We would love to know that you were here, so please just take a moment to sign on those. I am Jeff Rainwater. I am one of your pastors here at Hope Church. I'm Harry Park, another pastor at Hope. We invite you to fully live into this time of celebration. If you are moved to clap, clap. If you are moved for an impromptu hallelujah or amen, say that as well. This is a day of joy. There we go, right? That's how you do it, right there, in case you've never been in a church that's done that. So there we go. We hope that you will leave with your hearts lifted up and encouraged by this day. We are also grateful that we have each other. And so I would invite you to stand and greet those around you this morning as you pass the peace of Christ. remain standing as we join in our call to worship this morning. Yesterday we thought death had won. Yesterday we thought all was lost. Yesterday we thought Christ was gone. We have a reason to hope. We have a reason to sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen today. He is risen indeed. Amen. Please remain standing for our opening hymn.
what a wonderful opening that we made as a one. Let's give our chance choir a now. Okay, with a deep breath, let us pray. God of new beginnings, on that first Easter morning, the disciples struggled to hear the good news. Doubt took root and hope vanished. As we enter into worship this Easter morning, help us to hear differently. Open our ears that we might hear the sound of Alleluia ringing. Open up our minds that the joy of Easter might feel within reach. Open up our hearts that we might believe the unbelievable. And like Peter, in this hearing, may we move closer to you with hope in our hearts. We listen and we pray. Amen. Amen. It's time for our kids, uh, children here. Please come forward for a message time only for you. You can, you can do it. I will distribute. I will distribute. So. <laughs> Happy Easter, guys. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Hola. <laughs> so um, I will distribute these to you. Uh, pick one of them. Oh, 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 I will reach yeah, for you. And please check and double check what is written on that. Uh, today we are going to explore some amazing surprises from God. Uh, I'm sharing some stories about God's surprises with you. After each story, let's say together, God said, surprise, I love you. Okay? Yeah. So when you notice that I'm reading about the things in your hands, please hold it up. Hold it up, okay? So I ask you to check what is written there. Let's start. First, a king in a barn who has, yes, hide up, yeah. Imagine expecting a king to live in a palace, but finding him in a barn instead. That's what happened with the baby Jesus Christ, you know? So this shows us God's love comes in unexpected ways. Yeah? This is surprise number one. So say it together. God said, surprise, I love you. Yeah, you have to hold it up. Yeah. Second one is about Zachary's lunch. Who has it? Yeah, you have it. Oh, great. Zachary was not the most liked man. You know who he is? No idea? Yeah, everyone hated him. But Jesus chose to eat with him. This surprised everyone. Yeah? Jesus showed us that every, everyone deserves love. So let's say it. God said, surprise, I love you. Yeah, good job. The next one is about the big picnic. Yeah, who has the things about the big picnic there? With only five loaves and two fish, you know, Jesus fed how many? 5,000. Yeah, 5,000 people. Or 4,000 in other verses. Yeah, anyway, thousand he fed. Yeah. It's a miracle, miracle. So this miracle surprised everyone by showing that with God, there's always enough, always enough. Ready? Ready? Go. God said, surprise, I love you. Good job. About the foot washers. Good way. Jesus washing his followers' feet was a big surprise for them. 
It showed being a leader means serving others. Together now, ready? God said, surprise, I love you. Oh, I couldn't see. It is the last one. It's about Easter surprise. Easter surprise, yeah. The biggest surprise was when Jesus came back to life from death. Yeah. God showed love is stronger than anything, even death. Mm -hmm. So everyone with a big voices, God said, surprise, I love you. Yes, guys. God loves surprising us, right? I feel my life is filled with his amazement, his surprises. So remember this today on Easter. The best surprise is how much he loves each of you here. Look out for those surprises and spread the love toward the world with your friends. Can you pray together? Repeat after me, please. Thank you, God for surprising us with, with your love. For us with your love. Help us to share that love with others. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here with us. Sure, yes. Yeah.
Today's scripture reading is from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to the hands of sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stopping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Well, church, it is good to be with you here today. I know you have a great bulletin here that has a nice picture and a title, right? Toss that away. <laughs> that one didn't work out, so instead we're going to have a lesson in strawberries. Would you pray with and for me, please, in a moment of silent prayer? Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So there's something you need to know about me, and that is I am not a gardener. I have a garden. Actually, what I have is a little box in the side of my very small little yard, and Laura does most of the work, right? I am not a gardener, and so I will freely and wholly admit, when it comes to gardening, I am dumb. I know nothing. I am not a gardener. And those of you, and I know there are many, who are gardeners will learn this fact in just a moment. The first year that we as actually had a garden was not when we moved to Denver, but when we lived in Laramie, my church had this great idea of making a community garden in part of their yard. So we had 12 to 15 plots that we uh, had for church members, for community members, for anybody. And I thought, well, my church has a garden. I guess I should garden in my church. So I did, right? And we were all excited. We were looking forward to the garden. We were trying to decide what we wanted in the garden. Lettuce, yes. Onions, yes. Tomatoes for Laura only, right? <laughs> zucchini, zucchini. We had more zucchini than we know what to do with, right? We planted three zucchini plants. I found that you only need one. <laughs> and then you need about 12 neighbors to share it with. That's what you need, right? We had it all, and we still had a little part of the garden left. And I thought, well, what do we place there? Well, how about strawberries, right? Emma loves strawberries. I love strawberries. Laura does, too. We'll plant some strawberries, and we did. We got these two beautiful little plants. We placed them in the garden in this deep, rich soil, and we cared for them and, and cared for them over the time. And they were beautiful. They were beautiful, but then, you know, we got, what, three, four little berries? <laughs> little berries, that's all we got, such disappointment. And then winter came. Winter came, and it all died. So we cleaned out what we thought we should. We put the garden to bed, and we thought no more about strawberries. 
But after winter, spring came. We thought, we'll try again. So we go out, and I'm getting the garden ready. I'm starting to till. I'm starting to do all those good things I've been told to do. And I look in my garden, and here are these little green plants coming up. And, well, those look like strawberries. Those can't be strawberries. They must be a weed. Do you know what I did to that weed? Yes. Yes, I pulled it right out of the ground, tossed it aside, got two more beautiful plants of strawberry, and planted them in the ground, right? And at the end of the season, yes, I had three or four little things, right? And so after the second season, still not knowing, I pulled everything up again, and we thought no more about strawberries. See, gardeners, I told you. <laughs> I told you I was dumb. Because a friend of ours who had a similar plot in the same garden right next to ours, she, after two or three years, had this beautiful patch of strawberries that produced buckets and buckets and buckets of strawberries. And every now and then, she was kind and gracious and shared a bowl or two with her dumb gardener friends who didn't know what they were doing. Right? Well, the women on that Sunday morning were gardeners just like me. It wasn't strawberries that they had been tending to. Their garden had, they had worked for over three years in the season of their life following this rabbi. And they had been growing something much more important than zucchini or onions or strawberries. They were growing things like hope. Hope, you see, takes a long time to grow. Hope is often very fragile in the beginning. Disappointment can crush it so easily. But that what they had seen and what they had experienced had given them hope and allowed it to grow. This Jesus that they had been following for three years, he had power. He had power to heal. He had power to cast out evil. He even had the power and compassion to reach down to the last, the lost, the common. And so hope grew. And alongside hope, other things grew, like dreams. Dreams sprouted forth. Dreams of an Israel redeemed and free. Dreams of justice and peace in their land. It was a beautiful season. But then winter came, as it always does. Winter came to their garden, and they watched as Jesus died. He didn't just die, right? That would be bad enough. He had been humiliated, tortured, mocked for all to see. And then when his last breath had left his body, his cold body was laid in a cold tomb. Winter had come to their garden, and how bitter it was. The disciples were no better off. In fact, they were much worse. They were leaving the cleanup, the cleanup work, to the women. Any amens from the women? I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's the way it often is, right? They left the duty of caring for Jesus' body to the women. Matthew may have been studying up on his accounting law, thinking of going back into practice. Peter was wondering if he still had the strength to cast a net. Most of them, though, were just plain scared. Pilate, the Sanhedrin, those that had planned Jesus' demise, they weren't worried. Winter had come, and in winter, dreams die. Sin, death, and the devil were laughing. 
Now, I'm guessing some of you have been there. Some of you have been there when winter comes and a dream dies. You know just what your life is going to look like. You have it all planned out. Your dreams are bright, and then the frost comes unexpectedly. We live in the Mountain West, after all, when winter can come any time. Or maybe you are in a winter now, and it has been a while since you were able to have any hope. Will this winter ever end? Who knew strawberries were perennials? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Who knew hope and dreams are perennials too? Not the women until that first eater morning when they come to the tomb expecting death and finding something else. An empty tomb and an angel with an unbelievable message. Jesus has risen. He is alive. He will be waiting for you in Galilee where all this dream started. Life has won. Life wins. That is what today is about. What we are about. The question is, do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it enough that you are willing to live your life based on this one fact? That a man named Jesus who had been defeated, dead, and buried walked out of his tomb very much alive. Now you may say, that was so long ago. That was so long ago, we don't see that happening here anymore. Not now. And yes, that was long ago and far away, but have you not seen with your own eyes some evidence, some sign that life wins? You see, I use this image of strawberries not because Jesus' resurrection is some empty metaphor for idea of new beginnings, but because, as Martin Luther says, our Lord has written the promise of resurrection not in books alone, but in every leaf in springtime. Every leaf in springtime. One of my cousins, who is not religious, really, wrote on his Facebook page, the beauty of the trees blooming with their flowers, coloring the land reminds me of that truth that I am loved. Every new beginning, every new beginning points to the fact that Jesus lives and that life wins. You mess up, you make a big mistake, you hurt someone in your life, and yet that loved one forgives you. And so your life begins anew. Budget cuts mean that you get laid off, and you're out of work. And after some time, after some interviews, you find work again and meaning to life. The doctor gives you bad news, but then after surgery and treatment and recovery, there is health. Now, it doesn't always happen that way, but every time it does, every one of those new beginnings is a witness to the reality that death is not as strong as we fear, a witness that life in and through Jesus wins because Jesus is alive. Life wins. So can you do this one favor? Quit pulling up the strawberry plants. <laughs> we do it so often. We do it. We look at everything that is broken and we think this cannot be fixed. Congress can't do its job, so why should I vote? 
My sister is never going to talk to me again, so why should I make that call? Now, I don't know what it is that you have given up or are thinking of giving up. Maybe a relationship, maybe a dream, maybe a commitment to a life that will make a difference. I don't know what it is, but you do. Don't pull up the strawberries. Stop living the lie that death has won. Because in this world, life and love win. What does it mean for life to win? What does it mean to live that way? It means I don't have to scratch and claw to ensure my future turns out as it should. I can, I can have faith. I can have patience, knowing that winter is a reality, but spring following is also a reality. I can learn to forgive, knowing that the harm done to me, though painful, is not permanent. I can continue seeking the life that God would have me live, even if it doesn't seem to be bearing fruit just quite yet. I can have hope. Fred Craddock once told of a story of meeting a young woman on a college campus. The young woman came up to him and said after a speech of his that uh, she was attending that college. She was a freshman. She told him her story. She said, you know, I was a failure. I was a failure in my classes. I wasn't having any dates. I didn't have many friends or money. I wasn't doing well. I was depressed. I was homesick. I was thinking, really, of ending it all. She said, one Sunday, I went to the river near the campus. I walked onto the bridge, I even climbed onto the rails and looked into the dark water below. But for some reason or another, this thought, this line came to me, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. And so she said, I stepped back from that edge, and here I am. Fred Craddock asked, well, where, where did you learn that line from? Where did you hear it? I don't know, she said. Do you go to church, he asked. No. Well, she thought, I did go to Sunday school at my grandma's house long ago. Ah, Craddock says. And I can almost smell the strawberries. Life wins. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.
We may weep through the longest nights. We may stare at the empty tomb with more questions than answers. We may run our fingers over the barrier clothes and still long for more, but today we are a people of hope. <clears throat> Join me in this affirmation. We believe in new beginnings. We believe that the God who created the world is stronger than that. We believe that Jesus abides among us, healing, teaching, and living fingerprints throughout this world. We believe a tomb could not hold him. We believe that the sun does rise. We believe that Peter was there with questions all and faced the size of the Mustard Sea. We believe that the story is not over yet, for God is among us. Today, we are a people of hope. Amen. As we rejoice in Easter's blessings, let's offer with great hearts. Our ushers, please join us in collecting our offerings. Thank you for your generosity.
please remain standing and let us pray for our dedication to God. On this blessed Easter day, we present these gifts to you with hearts uplifted in celebration of your son's resurrection. May these offerings be a reflection of the hope and joy that Easter brings to our lives and to the world. Bless them, O oh Lord, and use them to spread your love and grace far and wide. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please be seated and continue with prayer for the people. Let's pray. God of joy, be with us as we rejoice in Jesus Christ's resurrection. Let your love illuminate our lives and reach those in darkness, offering healing and hope. Remind us through this amazement of the woman at the tomb and Mary's encounter, that this joy and victory over darkness and death are ours today. Christ is risen, affirming life and hope for each of us. May this good news fill our hearts and inspire us to serve, making us true Easter people. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as all forgive those trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It has been a joy to worship you with you today. Can we give our appreciation one more time to our beautiful musicians, our choir, our handbell choir, our brass? We are grateful for the ways that they have blessed this space with music. We are grateful for those listed in the bulletin who have given the Easter lilies um, in honor or a memory of someone. And there's two on the screen that weren't printed in the bulletin, but there are many more names we hope you will look at in the bulletin as well. And we are grateful that you have chosen to worship with us on this Easter morning. We are deeply grateful for you all. On April 14th, we will begin a new series called Enough, Discovering Joy Through Simplicity and Generosity as we're going to dive into what does the Bible say about our money? Hmm, that could be interesting. We hope you will join us. We're also going to have a small group session for those that wish to go deeper in the topic. Uh, with a book by Adam Hamilton of the same title. And if you're interested in knowing more, there's a little thing outside the doors and to your right there as well. And if you have uh, been joining us and are looking for a church home, looking for a spiritual home and think that hope might be it, we invite you to join us on the fourth Sunday of every month following worship in our library for a time of conversation that we call starting point. Or if you're interested, please just write a note to uh, Pastor Hale or me or the church office. We would love to talk to you about it more. We come here believing that Christ lives in our hearts, in our world, all around us everywhere. And so let us go forth singing those very words, let us stand and sing our closing hymn, He Lives, number 310. <laughs>
those of you wondering why all these people came up front, we have a tradition here at Hope that I forgot to announce, because this is my first Easter, is that if you wish to sing the Hallelujah Chorus with the choir, you are invited to come forward. So please, if there's any others, come on down. And now, friends, we go with the assurance that though the night may be dark, though death may seem at our door, life and love and the God who made us wins. Go with that thought on your hearts and on your minds and in everything you do. And as you go, may God go before you to show you the way. May God be above you to protect you, beneath you to hold you up, beside you to be your friend, and inside of you to give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you.